Firstly, we want to introduce our topic today. So uh, we are here uh, with a presentation about the future of the game audio industry. And uh, the main question that we want to answer through the presentation is, will IA replace the sound designers? And, uh, and yeah, that's the main, that the base of our, um, of our presentation today. Um, my name is Kinga Kaminska. I'm the social media manager in Ribbon Sand Company. Uh, but more about the company and, uh, yeah. and itself. Tomasz, please. Hello, my name is Tomasz. I work as audio lead in Rebound. Uh, and we're both working in Rebound, actually. Uh, it's a company based uh, in LA, California. We are mostly focused on providing all kind of um, outsourcing solutions for audio, mostly for AAA games. Uh, until now, we're mostly focused on American market, but now uh, we're prou proud to announce that we opened a new facility here in Krakow. So that's actually our first official appearance as, as Polish branch. So uh, we're even more happy to be here and we're super happy to see you all uh, in that room. Yeah, yeah. we are very excited for, for this presentation and for our presence here. So. Uh, today our structure looks like this. The firstly, we want to introduce the topic and then go to the, the main part, the exploratory research and examples. Then we go to the summary conclusion. It's like the basic structure of every presentation, but <laughs> let's go. Yep. So, so um, AI is a kind of clickbaity topic these days. Like uh, we get all sort of content, we are flooded uh, about it. All kind of videos, podcasts, articles about AI usage uh, in various fields of uh, culture uh, and business. And even on this year, Digital, Digital Dragons Conference, we're one of many presenters who prepared a speech uh, about AI. So the question is, should we be surprised? Well, not at all. Um, among many tools that were in development for a couple of years or already in use, uh, the release of ChatGPT in November 2022 kind of changed the game. Uh, and it showed that um, the distant future uh, of sci-fi artificial intelligence is not distant at all. And a matter of fact, it's already here and it's already uh, changing the world as we knew it. Um, so, is there anything we can do about it? Oh, I don't think so. Yeah, will most of current job disappear? Will we get not even unemployed, but unemployable? Um, we'll see. We're definitely facing uh, a, a revolution. Uh, changes can be scary, but we as humans proved many times before that we can find ourselves in the face of any kind of uh, revolution or automatization. Let's look, for example, uh, in 1920s, uh, a farmer that lost his job to, due to mechanization of agriculture, he could find himself employed at the tractor factory, for example. In the 80s, the same physical worker that lost his job due to uh, automatization of production could hire himself as a cashier or a customer support. But will the same farmer, factory worker, or cashier find a new job in data science or as a team member of AI human relations in next 10 or 20 years. Well, we know you will know a Harari, so we don't know, but we are some designers working in game dev, so we will at least try to answer some hot questions uh, about the future of our industry. Yeah, and B for a moment, uh, a bit uh, futurologist, so next. We can go next, yeah. So, um, yeah, um, I want to introduce the, the first slide with uh, sound games and AI, uh, meaning framing the topic. So, uh, in this point, we want to introduce the, the, the topic of sound games and AI as a very coherent, and, um, and today we discuss about it and uh, um, as an intersection of sound, the video games, technology, and AI. And uh, when it comes to the video games, and uh, sound design has always been an integral part of the gaming experience. So uh, with, the, uh, with the context of AI, we asking today if the developers now and, uh, and in the future will be able to, uh, to take sound design to the next level to make sounds uh, generated, not uh, created by humans. So, 
we are now in the in the moment between the fear and adoration. So we asked the question, where are we with AI now and what does it mean for the audio industry? So um, between the fear and adoration are two vectors that um, di direct our thinking about the, about the AI. From the one side, we, we are a bit afraid. Uh, we asked the question, like our question, if someone replaced us or you know how it will develop in the future. And from the other hand, we have we we are a bit uh, we adorated a bit. We we like this idea, and we always you know uh, was focused and and you know and we want to achieve uh, this moment of of history when we create. Um, yeah, just an artificial intelligence, the artificial life in, in some way. So uh, we are here in this moment. And now uh, we go um, to the next part, the exploratory research and examples. Uh, in this part, we want to <coughs> tell you more about AI and sound, and we want to trace the potential of those, of those tools, of those things that we uh, share with you today. So. Uh, mainly, we want to uh, introduce some tools like visually indicated sound, isotope ozone, Evan Labs, Beta, also the Adobe Podcast, and Yumi. Uh, and yeah, over here we want to show you examples and um, ask the question how audio professional can approach the inevitable. Tomasz? Yes, um, because our topic is focused mostly on the game industry, we'll not go too deep into the pop music side of things. But since sound design and music creation is probably the most similar yet the most different branch of art creation, we have to say a few words at least. From what it looks right now, um, music side of audio industry is facing a much more serious threats and complications due to AI technology than us game audio designers, but we'll get back to it later. Um, we all heard about deepfake, but AI creating vocals and music based on signature style of top industry artists um, like Kanye, like Drake, like The Weeknd, it causes a wide variety of problems, questions, and dilemmas. Um, but first, here is a few examples um, to listen. Like when you said you thought so happy you could die. Told myself that you were right for me, but felt so lonely in your company. So yeah, that's probably the best for per per performance from Kanye from years. Um, here's another one. He's a YouTube reaction video, and that's even funnier. When it's cold out from you, I got enemies, okay? To when it's cold out Ooh. from they try whoa. enemy, I swear. Whoa, whoa. Drake, bruh. You gotta hire this man. This is better than your actual ghostwriters, my nigga. And that's no funny stuff. That's no funny stuff, Drake. You gotta hire this. He better than you. <laughs> yeah, deep fake more like deep Drake. Uh -huh. uh, well, so I would definitely find some audience, and it's like equally good or even better. Um, but what will artists say about it? Um, would a decent percentage solve the problem um, with copying their voice expression and style? Is that the case? Um, well, Grimes, for example, she's a synth pop star, uh, and privately she's Elon Musk's partner, as far as I can remember. Um, she already claimed that she's totally fine with being copied by AI if 50% of the revenue will go straight to her. So uh, maybe, maybe that's, that's the answer. On the other hand, <coughs> speaking about Drake uh, in person, uh, his record label, uh, which is Universal Music Group, in their statement posted right after these, this deep Drake situation happened, uh, they said that is, this is a moral and commercial responsibility to our artists to work to prevent the unauthorized use of their music and to stop platforms from ing ingesting content that violates the rights of artists and other creators. So that's all good, right? We're safe and everything is, is taken care of. On the other hand, down below, they say that UMG's success has been in part due to embracing new technology and putting it to work with our artists as we have been doing with our own innovation around AI for some time already. So maybe they won't need no artists uh, in like 
a few years, but we don't know that uh, for sure. So then, is it safe to say that the time is coming when no one will be ready to submit himself to the ennobling discipline of learning music? Everyone will have their ready-made, already pirated music in their cupboards. That kind of makes sense, right, in this, in this topic. However, <laughs> that was said by this guy. His name is John Philip Souza, and as you can tell by the picture, he's kind of old. And that was actually in 1877 when Edison invented the phonograph. So uh, we can <laughs> safely say that we have been there already and we faced uh, similar problems uh, before. So AI and sound, and sound design especially, and, and, and game dev. Uh, from the game dev workflow perspective, we can divide um, a general term of sound design into different branches, like combining the terminology of sound and game audio industry, we can talk about categories like um, audio synthesis, foley, voiceovers, mixing, mastering, post-production, even asset creation could be its own, own, own separate category. Um, and most of them, if not all of these categories, already has some kind of smart machine, machine learning tool or AI tool that makes things easier and faster. With that perspective in mind, uh, in this chapter we are trying to answer the main question of our thesis, will we be replaced actually in any time soon? Um, but to do it, let's start with a short history lesson of the tools that change the industry as we know it right now. First good example would be MIDI, something we all use uh, on a day, on daily basis. Yeah. <coughs> Yeah, so musical instrument digital interface, a technical solution that allows to connect a wide variety of sampled electronic instruments with computers. It's a protocol used by all producers, composers, writers, and sound designers as well. You can not only use it to produce and write music, but also like to trigger footsteps or, I don't know, gunshots into your uh, sound design project. Um, first released in 1983, of course, brought a lot of discussion about musicians' redundancy. Um, like here in this interview uh, with famous ba bass player Anthony Jackson. Uh, right, let's give him a listen. That time, another 15,000 recording sessions. Not, uh, not these days. You know how things have changed. I don't. That's well, why I'm asking you. The machines are here. Oh, oh. I'll outplay any body using the machine or I'll die I don't care I the day that the machine outplays me they can plant me in the yard with the corn uh, and I mean it I'm very serious I will not permit myself to be outplayed by someone using the machine I'm just not going to permit that yeah so no spoilers but 30 years later Anthony Jackson is not lying in the court field He's still doing fine, doing his thing, playing bass guitar, uh, great as he is, but was he outplayed? Well, considering the current state of MIDI technology, he definitely could be. So he just had to find a way around it. Um, another very popular tool that we all use as audio professionals is our DAWs. Uh, digital audio workstations is the, base, the most basic and necessary software to produce any kind of audio when it comes to programming, editing, uh, recording, uh, aud any audio files basically. And when they got very popular, those DAWs, in the late 90s, old school audio in engineers thought that all of the recording business will go down as they start selling the analog gear for pennies. Well, did it happen? Of course, no. Uh, instead, it opened new options, uh, new possibilities for a wider group of people that could no longer be limited by the access to the studios or limited to, you know, have access to those greatly expensive gear to record and produce their ideas. And those old school um, audio producers, they, uh, engineers, they actually find themselves in it as well because they not only started selling it, those, those gear, but they started doing digital emulations of those analog gears and they sold them for a nice, uh, nice price as well. Okay, so, uh, 
Uh, now we are going to the main part about the sound design itself, not about the music. So here we want to just to remind you a few tools that we that we chose to this presentation to explore and to show you uh, how they works. And now uh, we can go to the first one, the generative voices um, presented by um, represented by the uh, startup uh, Eleven Labs, which is. Uh, which is great, it's very excited to talk about it because uh, the tool um, depends, on, uh, depends on voices, it generates voices, generates voices of uh, very high quality, uh, voices were using many, many languages and many voices and also uh, the aim was to create a tool that uh, you, can, um, you can record your voices and upload it to the tool and then you can uh, generate the voice of you or anyone that you, you want to. <laughs> uh, so uh, that's the 11 labs and um, it's a reminder for you and be aware of it because uh, it's a very, very crazy thing and can't wait for uh, new developments from the 11 labs. Tomasz. Yes, so that's its interface. It's uh, it's a browser app uh, right now. Uh, you get the set basic settings, not too much parameters at this moment, but you can choose like the base vocal sample you will uh, you will use from a list. In a, I think in a unpaid version, you have like eight voices to use to choose from. Some basic parameters about stability and similarity enhancement, whatever that means. Uh, then you can choose your language and, of course, type the text uh, you will uh, you want to 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 have. Then just hit generate, and in a matter of seconds, you end up with a ready-to-go WAV file that you can basically use in your project. Yeah. Wherever you want. The tool is um, also uh, I need to add it. Uh, the tool uh, knows how to not only understand the, the text, but also understand the context of the text. So the um, emotions are more visible uh, in this kind of generated voices than, than other tools that we, that we checked, so. Yes, and we made a little example. Uh, here is a cutscene from a game, game we, we had a chance to work on, and we just switched the original voiceovers with uh, the voices generated by this very tool. You couldn't even save the life of your own father. You do not scare me, little mouse. Yes. And now the original. You couldn't even save the life of your own father. You do not scare me, little mouse. Yeah. So of course, of course, it doesn't sound too good in this type of cutscene where emotional expression is crucial. Um, and it's, it's a cutscene, it's not <laughs> happening in open word. But imagine uh, creating some kind of NPC phrase or just something less significant to your gameplay. And each time you hit generate in this, uh, in this tool, you get a slightly different outcome. So if you're clicking, clicking down the line, then you can get pretty, pretty exciting um, assets to use. So, um, well, considering the current state of this, of this technology, the real question is, will we even need voice actors in the future? Considering the current state of this technology, the real question is, will we even need voice actors in the future? Yeah, so here it gets interesting. Uh, I made my own AI model based on my, uh, my voice, and it took me like 30 minutes to achieve it. Um, it all it needed was I made eight samples. They were like 30 seconds to 60 seconds long each. It was basically me reading some articles from LinkedIn. Uh, and just you know, drag and drop to the tool um, a, a few uh, phrases that age, uh, gender and the basic info for the tool to comprehend uh, the, the process material and that's the outcome. And it does sound pretty convincing. Of course, it's not here yet 100%, but it gives a lot of possibilities for the VO pipeline. Like imagine you don't have to really book the, ac the actor every single time. If tools like that would be you know, more evolved, you can book your actor once for a solid session 
sample him, and then use him over and over again in every session, in every project that you like. Maybe not so uh, hard, and, and, but it's a slightly different example. Imagine you, your actor just left the session, and you're like, damn, I lost. <laughs> he had to record this one more line, and he didn't. He's on his way home. That's no, no longer the case. You can basically type the text, uh, and you can get not maybe 10 out of 10 uh, result, but maybe 9 out of, out of 10, 8 out of 10 uh, will do. Another option is bringing voice to disabled, like they did with Val Kilmer in Top Gun. He is no longer able to speak, but he was in the movie because he was sampled by an AI tool that basically um, brought his voice back. Yeah, and it's a very great feature if it could help anyone. So uh, next tool that we want to show you is, um, is Adobe Podcast. Uh, Adobe is a company that I, <laughs> I hope that I not uh, have to introduce anyone. And they create a tool uh, now in the form of, uh, of beta testing, but we can use it on the on the website, on the browser. So uh, it's the simple tool for um, helping the um, the podcasters, the people who create the content, audio or audiovisual, um, to create the uh, sounds, to create the the voices, the the whole audio sphere, um, more professional, but. With, uh, without any professional, you know, uh, needs, helps, and, and involving people. So uh, it's m mostly uh, mostly for podcasters, but in our context of sound design, is is also very important to to remember about those um, those things. So now, yeah, here is how it looks. Uh, it's the most simple tool you can imagine. It's still in the browser. It's a beta. Uh, you just drag and drop your sample into this box, uh, play, upload, and in a matter of seconds, you end up with a downloaded MP3 or WAV file that you can use. When you first test that, we are super impressed about yeah. how <laughs> it works. But what we did was, uh, <laughs> that was, that was not the best approach. We tested that in the languages that we both don't speak, yeah. like Norwegian or something. We were like, oh, this is great. It cleaned it up perfectly. But yeah, then it, it so ended up just, yeah. you know, cut some, some sibilance and some, and some words. Um, but we did our own kind of experiment with it. Uh, so we recorded ourselves talking. Uh, we put the microphone in the room, like five meters away from us. We went out on the balcony. We played loud music in the room next door, and we chose the time of day when it was the most busy uh, in the streets. And we recorded uh, a sample of us talking. Uh, and you know it's hard to listen to your own voice, but in, si in the sake of science, we'll do it for you. So here it is, uh, us talking with Kinga. So, hi Tomas, are you ready for Digital Dragons? No, definitely nothing is ready. <laughs> so, so, so far from being ready to this conference, so I want to know how it's going to end up. Okay. You? Yeah, I know it so well. Same here. <laughs> yep, and after three seconds of post-production, it sounds like this. So, hi Tomas, are you ready for Digital Dragons? No, definitely nothing is ready. My so, so, so far from being ready to this conference, so I want to know how it's going to end up. Yeah. yeah, I know it so well. Same here. <laughs> yeah, not there yet, but it is kind of impressive. On the first glimpse, you can hear some EQ compression, noise reduction, ducking, sidechain, and enhancing, and it's all great. Of course, it cuts some, you know, syllables, and it's, it's not perfect. But first, that's a beta. It's in early development. And second, the source was very, very bad on purpose. Uh, it was noise everywhere. So imagine giving it like a decently recorded take. Like you, I don't know, recorded a podcast with your phone, and that's it. It's relatively quiet and in, in good environment. And you don't need any type of audio magic to make your uh, production uh, sounds good. So yeah, kind of impressive. So hi, no, 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 no. that's enough. So, that's enough. Hi, so hi, yeah. 
Feikinger. Um, <laughs> when it comes to audio magic, we have to say a few words about isotope and ozone, especially, because isotope has been doing stuff with uh, creative uh, algorithms um, for a while. And Ozone is basically a mastering tool that analyzes your audio in real time and suggests, gives you a ready-to-go uh, FX chain uh, that makes your track sound better. And here is a little example of it doing its thing on our short uh, promo video. Uh, yeah, let's give it a listen. So yeah, that was that was pretty quick uh, when it comes to to workflow. Uh, it did it in real time, and basically, I mean, it it sounds different. It doesn't sound better, worse. I mean, I leave it to you, but it sounds in a different way. So we, what you can do about it? Um, what I heard on the previous panels, which is uh, a great thing, you don't you don't want to relate on AI these days as a ready-to-go product, but if you get inspired by it, then you can maybe take one of these uh, setups, one of these um, parameters it, it chose for this track, and maybe play a, a little bit around it. Maybe you'll find something uh, that's, that's right for you. Maybe you can learn something from it as well if you do it over and over again and test your audio through uh, automated ozone, you will, pro you will, for example, see that your audio is always having a too much low end. And that's something to you know think about. Maybe next time you'll focus on that aspect a little bit more. Another side of it, if we are all using the same algorithm, and it's not machine learning, it's just, you know, it's a solid setup, it's, it's there, and it's not like re rethinking it every time and not learning with, a, uh, with a, another take. So if all uh, audio producers would be doing things like that, we would be very bored by the music and production we, we, we get as, as clients, as customers. So there is also a place for creativity and, and, and you know, uh, uh, different approach even to something so specific as audio engineering. Okay, move next. So, Foley, 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 Foley. The art of creating of sound effects of a film for gaming, um, etc. And Foley. Uh, Foley here is represented by visually indicated sound. It's, um, it's a very interesting project, but not as the previous one the start from startup or from from a great company like Adobe. But this is an academic project um, run by some academics. So uh, we don't have uh, even a prototype of this tool that we want to show you today. Uh, the effect of of the job uh, is um, are the articles and also the. Um, the movie uh, showing how this tool uh, could work, but it, you know, it's a pity, but it isn't for uh, in open access for, for anyone to use it. So we want to show you because um, it was very difficult to find anything about the Foley and the AI. So um, that's the basically the only thing, and the, maybe not the only, but the you know most worth to say to to show you, and uh, and this project. Uh, we want to we want to show you as the is only the movie uh, they have on the on the site um, because it's like we said it's academic and we cannot you know empirically empirically uh, test it by ourselves. So, unfortunately, yeah, yeah, unfortunately, definitely, yeah. Our algorithm takes a video sequence as input and it predicts a corresponding sequence of sound features. After our network predicts sound features. We synthesize a waveform by matching these features to a database of impact sounds and transferring the best matches. Here are some soundtracks that our algorithm produced. Yeah, so imagine 
the linear audio production workflow with a tool like that, when you don't need to edit or match uh, your sound effects into timeline, cut, edit, trim, anything, because you just hit the preset and it analyzes the video and you get a ready audio track with your sound effect effects synchronized perfectly to the video. Of course, from the you know audio perspective, it it could be not there like 100%, but you can always tweak it, make it better, or you know improve it. But the huge amount of work is already done by the algorithm, and that's uh, the, the very interesting thing about it. It's not like text based. Video based, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's video based. The only one uh, example we have with a video based uh, generator of of sounds and voices. So uh, it's a very special project, and we, you know, looking forward if they want to release it as a prototype. Uh, we really want to use it. We really want to test it because it's it's very worth to to remember and be aware of. Yeah, especially for linear. Maybe not interactive too much when you focus on asset creation itself, but in linear production that could save a lot of time. Thank you. Let's go next. And uh, now we want to go uh, to the mm, very, very uh, part uh, of the presentation that we know the best, uh, because uh, in, in everyday work we uh, mostly works uh, with SFX, with sun design. So uh, here we want to present the tool named Aumi, uh, meaning the audio metaphor. Um, and the audio metaphor is also the project run by by academics by the three or four uh, research center, as I remember. And um, and they create the exact the tool that we can test, we can we can try. Um, but the main aim was to, you know, find the, another way uh, for the methods and the tools um, how to um, working with composition. So. Uh, we want to show uh, the usage of this tool in the context of, the, you know, the nearest for us, the SFX. But also the tool is something more. It's kind of a creation, uh, also the pieces of art. Because as you um, will see on the on the examples, uh, the the results from this tool are very very <laughs> interesting. <Yeah. laughs> so that's the interface. It's not much, as you can tell. Um, I want to hear, and you just type in what you want to hear, press listen, it takes up to you know, 20, 30 seconds that you get presented with one single take. The downside of this particular tool is that you cannot download the audio in any form. There is no such option. So the only way to capture is, is to do a you know, screen capture as we did uh, with, with this take. So let's hear, we asked it to do a footsteps on the grass. So yeah, these are definitely footsteps, but if we if I were, you know, feedbacking this kind of audio, I would have <laughs> a few things to say. Uh, you can tell it's it's definitely not a ready product. Like the perspective, the range of dynamics, uh, the range of, you know, the color, it's like all over the place. So definitely not usable in any form, uh, aside from the fact that you cannot download it and just, you know, uh, make it your, uh, your own asset. But let's go further. Let's, let's give him, like, a chance. How about I want to hear a medieval war? Yeah, so um, some guys are fighting. It's it's it could be a war, but like the inconsistency uh, and chaos in this in this piece is is just something else. Like, what's about those whooshes? What's about those metal slides very close to the microphone? What's about it? Like, why it's there? Uh, what's the purpose of it? It's completely unusable, and I'm happy to say it because we can feel safe, kind of. But you know, this is 
this is how it looks in the current state of this particular tool. Um, so yeah, it's getting there, but definitely not there yet, but let's not stop there. Let's give him one more chance. What about a rain in the forest? That could be easy, right? Yeah, you can probably tell if someone is a good sound designer, even on the simplest possible assets, you know, do me a nice ambience. That is not a nice, a nice ambience. What about this noise all over the place? Why it's there? I mean, you can hear some raindrops, some, you know, trees maybe, some a little bit of wind, but at the same time, do you have to use an AI tool to generate something like that? On the other hand, you can just go to your uh, library browser, click Rain in the Forest, and you get hundreds of well-recorded, well-produced, ready-to-go samples in a high bit rate that you can choose from, uh, combine them, and make something thousands times better than something like that. Um, so yeah, that's a no-go. Uh, yeah, maybe in this moment we should also say that uh, this tool, uh, the aim of this tool is to create uh, soundscapes. So uh, not only a simple asset, but the whole soundscape um, feeling the perception. So in this context, those, <laughs> um, those what we hear uh, is very, uh, very yeah, curious. Yeah, but it's just too <laughs> random. It, it's yeah. like... Oh, I know forest. I know sounds that correlates with forest, and I put all of them in, in, into this into this wave file, and it just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it should be better. But how it how does it you know uh, appears in the context of the actual designer doing work? You can probably tell by now, but let's do it. Um, so we asked him to make a robot speaking, a robot talking. It happened that lately we've been working on a project where we're designing a talking robot. Where are my materials? That's the AI take. Robot. Is that it? Mm -hmm. Oh no. Not, <laughs> not enough. And for the FM. Yeah, so the lack of consequence in artistic choice is, is just too crucial. Um, just, you know, to a little glimpse, uh, that's one of our takes on making a robot. Yeah, and that landed in the game for, for a reason, maybe, uh, in comparison to the previous AI take. And the last, I promise, the last example, nope, um, that's something we do very frequently, so I just had to do it. I had to ask him to make me a science fiction gunshots. Because, um, you know, our life would be so much easier if someone could do it for us. But, yeah. I mean, let's, let's listen. Sick, yeah. Um, that probably wouldn't make it into a game. That's my guess. I don't know, how, how do you think? But yeah. Um, and here is, you know, our take. From uh, from our uh, design. Yeah, slight difference here and there. Um, so um, yeah, this is Aomi. We couldn't really find find a different tool that does such things. There's plenty of tools like that for music, much more than than sound design. But yeah, not there yet. So we are at the final of, of the presentation. We go to the summary conclusions about the AI and replacement, etc. So 
Uh, after after the presentation, we want to you know summarize it and uh, ask again if uh, does AI replace sound designers? And uh, we really try to find simple answer on this difficult question because it's always the best way to uh, to understand something with uh, simple terms. But it isn't it isn't possible, I think. Uh, the yeah the. <laughs> Uh, contemporary world, the high demands, the complexity, and the other stuff unique for 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 design, for sound design especially, uh, are the you know <laughs> are impossible to um, to change and to ignore them uh, using only the AI tool in the in the sound design work. So um, still recording and providing source, sources as the more. Uh, is the most important in the in a in a sound design work because uh, <laughs> yeah because it's very creative and it's very uh, personal and uh, creativity isn't something um, that we can learn we can <laughs> we can teach the um, the artificial intelligence so um, we only are trying to to an answer this this question we only find a more question about the about the <laughs> about the topic. And it's impossible, uh, impossible to, to make a simple answer on it, and we think only only about it in this uh, in this way that it creates more questions, more you know thoughts, and especially we want to you know to focus uh, in the future on the on the two main vectors that are the author law and the postmodern remix culture because only. Uh, the you know mix all of uh, mix, mix the two those two things uh, can create the you know a new paradigm. Uh, then we can understand the culture, the contemporary culture. So we need to make you know some changes and make a, another moves to to answer this uh, question simpler. So Tomas, what do you think? Does AI replace the sound designers? Well. My question would, my answer would be no, not today at least. Um, but what's important to understand that it will impact the industry and it changes things already. There are many ways that it can impact our, you know, everyday life at work. First obvious thing is cost cutting. If those tools that we presented be in a better shape, better condition, they will be smarter. There will be no need to hire, you know, a time team of five sound designers. You could have one lead that understands the technology, and you can, he can do all the stuff by himself. The next obvious thing is time efficiency. That makes things faster, which is obvious. It creates new workflow standards with uh, new tools that every one of, of us, sound designers, audio professionals, would need to learn, we need to adapt, because there is no other way around it, we'll, we'll face it anyways. Um, that could also end up with different deadlines <laughs> and time expectations of the clients. We will be expected to, de to do things better, faster, more different every time, more unique, because you have all those smart tools, you, you can do it in seconds. Well, as you see, maybe not yet, but that's client's expectations, and we will have to face that anyways. Then there is indie games perspective and entry-level positions, and that's, that's actually interesting, and that's happening already. Because we are kind of thinking about, you know, huge AAA productions, and those kind of SFX, those kind of VOs you heard in this, uh, in this speech, they wouldn't make it into the game. But imagine being in a team of free developers, doing your first game, your free friends, you're making your, your project, and you don't need any sound designer to come to your, uh, to your project and, and mess around. Maybe this tool will do. Maybe those you know, AI-generated voiceovers will be enough for your project. What it also means for entry-level positions, as to the first uh, bold, the cost-cutting cost thing, um, similar thing is already happening in data science. You won't find a lot of jobs, a lot of positions for juniors. It's like 10% of the market. But the rest of it, it's seniors, it's leads, it's, it's you know, expert level, because that's, that's uh, where, it's, where it's heading. And the client expectations, um, of course. And the client perspective is, is, the, <laughs> is the funny, funny thing uh, in there as well. Um, 
So yeah, that's the tweet I found yesterday. I, ju I just had to put it in there. Uh, sorry. Yeah. <coughs> and that's not always the case. Uh, clients are also looking for their vision, for, your, for their ideas. They don't know as well. Uh, they're just not saying it. Uh, yeah, and then this accent, we'd like to thank you. Thanks a lot for, for being here. Yeah. Yeah, for listening, guys. <laughs> It's a, it's a late time, so yeah, I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kinga, Tomasz. We have some questions. I was just wondering if you, what your thoughts were on why <coughs> the sound effects creation side of AI is so poor. Is it, do you think, just to do with because it's so complex or because there's not enough demand for it commercially? Or if you had any thoughts on that? Yeah, maybe there is not demand for it yet. That's that's kind of my thought as well. Uh, c the complexity is also the case. Like you have a lot of uh, AI tools that generate pictures, and th they do great job in it. Mm. It's just not the same matter with picture and audio. It's probably a bit m harder for the technology at this moment to replicate the sound perfectly. And this particular tool, it was it was very simple. It was a stupid AI. It was like you know. Uh, doing the, the most simple thing, like r r they, it realizes, like, oh, that's the sound of this, and I put everything in it. So um, that's why it, it, the performance was so poor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah. And also, I am thinking about the about the money. Uh, I don't know if there are, you know, any any options to find the funds for uh, creating um, projects like like this one, this owl me, because as I said, the projects are from. From universities, they are not for. They are not run by companies. They are not leading by um, great inventors and innovators. So maybe that's also that's the case. <laughs> there won't be a good AI tool unless we, as industry, will make it. As we will say, yes, let's do it. Because until the time that these tools will be given, you know, a solid tracks to learn from, like produced, like. If they, if in a AI tool architecture, uh, architect will make a deal with a boom library. Like, let's use all of your, your sounds and make it an AI tool. Like, that would probably be something. But until, we, until that happens, we, we won't probably get any like, super smart tool that does a great job with, with it. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, so do you think uh, in in some future, maybe distant, maybe near future, if the AI creates the best possible sound effects, like the perfect sound effects, do you think that the job of the sound designer will be to just inflict his vision on, onto the AI? He will just say, I want to be the sound in this style, on uh, this type of style, and the AI can just, you know, create 10,000 assets in one day, but the sound designer will be just employed to just, for only for his vision. And of course, it's hard to predict, but from what I think, maybe, you know, to just sell it, sell the vision, you don't even need the sound designer. That can be done by a producer or a game director or someone. So maybe you don't need us at all. But on the other hand, even if we would have such tool that does all of the requirements that are in you know job requirements like you know every single it's in the right beat rate in the right right length it's the naming convention is right that you know everything in style and color and everything is great that's the scenario so even if that happens you would probably still need some designer to execute it as you said and then it has to end up in game as well so you'll have to you know Implement it, program it, you know, troubleshoot. Uh, our job is, is we, we don't know that we don't know stuff that we have to do. So it's always, you know, problem solving and, and you know, troubleshooting. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Kinga Tomasz, uh, for your presentation. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you.